everybody. Um, today we want to talk about Gucci and um, yeah, especially Alessandro Michele who is the creative director of the brand Gucci and the reason why we want to talk about this is because we just saw the spring pre-fall 2022 collection uh, which was held in Hollywood and I really would like to know what you are thinking about it so please write down below what your first impression was when you saw all these looks and um, I think it would be cool to just talk about it and put it also into context and, and see where this brand is kind of going because I have my opinion about it and I'd really like to know what you also think about it. And before we start, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel uh, if you haven't done that already or follow me on Instagram where I also share a little bit of my personal aesthetic and I just post a lot of stories of random stuff but it's super interesting. So maybe before I start um, talking about the latest collection, I, I'm pretty sure that you all know what the brand Gucci is and what Alessandro did, etc. But I still think it's very important to put it kind of into context to see um, how Michele came to that point to design the collection, for example. So maybe let's start with the brand Gucci. Um, of course, it's an Italian label that was bought by Kering, this huge conglomerate. You know, there's Kering and then there's LVMH and these are like the two big ones. And Gucci is always, you know, like um, fighting against the brands like Louis Vuitton, etc. Anyway, it's an Italian label and it was also founded by the family Gucci. And I mean, if you can wait a few days more, I think we will see the film in cinemas. And I know everybody's very eager to see that film. Actually, I have to say, I do not know if it's only me, but I was, you know, I do not know if I'm in that target group or anything, but I see these cinema film ads like since two months straight or something. I feel like I have seen the film already. I cannot see Lady Gaga anywhere anymore. I mean, I get it, you know, she's like the biggest ambassador of the brand, uh, of the film, but she's on every single cover right now. She is on multiple covers. All these Schiaparelli looks, Valentino Haute Couture, she's also the Valentino ambassador. It's kind of enough, you know, I'm just really over, I don't want to see Lady Gaga anymore. And that's actually the reason, even though I love Adam Driver, I really do not want to see the film actually. So that's only about that. That film will be interesting for the latest collections, but if you come back to the label, well, I think I will start with Tom Ford because he kind of revolutionized the brand in 1994. The brand was in a very bad financial situation, you know, nobody was really buying stuff from Gucci anymore, it was, it was just not on trend or anything. So Tom Ford came and um, I will show a few um, images that um, yeah, are very representative of his era at, um, at Gucci and he totally changed the brand like 180 degrees and turned it into a very luxurious, sexy, um, not funny, but very jet set. That's what they usually call it. I mean, it's also very fine, funny to describe jet set as a single attribute about a brand, but that's how they see it. And it was really that very strong sexiness. I mean, you know, all these campaigns that were very controversial back in that time, especially, you know, that G logo. It's that G logo. And um, I think it was pretty cool. And it kind of also fitted in th into that 90s minimalism sexiness. I think, I mean, Prada was kind of engaging. It was the time of Calvin Klein, Helmut Lang. We all had these very minimalistic brands and he was like minimalistic, but well, not really minimalistic, but you know, you have these satin glossy textures and stuff. Um, it's very sensual. Um, and this was something that didn't exist before and it was extremely beautiful. And of course, in the context of that time, you know, we had this very skinny white models usually, but I mean, not a lot has changed in Milan, in my opinion. So um, yeah, Tom Ford was there, I think for 10 years, 94 to 2004, I think. And um, in 2002, he also, um, Alexander Michele was working for Fendi as an accessories designer, and he was very popular for his very good handbag designs. And uh, still, as we see until now, Gucci is very famous for the handbags, the shoes, and they still make like 70-80% of the revenue with accessories. So ready to wear usually is the smaller part because, I mean, who's buying a $3,000 dress, but everybody's buying the handbag because everybody can see that it has a logo and that it has been expensive. So usually, in my op opinion, people who love ready to wear and have to say I am that person, it's really not because 
I want the logo not to be seen and I'm like that subliminal and um, that avant-garde. No, it's just I love ready to wear more than I just love accessories. So, uh, But he was very famous for his accessories. So in 2002, uh, Tom Ford is... Um, but he's applying, or I don't know, but he's getting to Gucci and Tom Ford is his boss. And he's like very happy with his designs and stuff. And in 2004, Tom Ford is leaving. And then Frida Giannini is taking over the brand as the creative director. And is also trying to keep that echo, you know, that epos of Tom Ford alive. And making a bit more, in my opinion, designing in a bit more conservative way. But still definitely applying that um sexiness to the clothes um but overall it is something that turns into i mean we're like in the mid 20s uh 2000s so you know how britney spears and everybody was dressing it was like the y2k era uh, and it was getting a bit more minimalistic also or let's say the the, the thoughts about fashion were also kind of changing and this whole jet set lifestyle i do not know if it has anything to do with the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009 actually but i feel like people didn't like that image of Jet Set and being rich and luxurious and just for the sake of like having money and that image of just being that person who is rich. I mean, I think people just couldn't identify with it. And I do not know if anybody else could do that in the 90s, but obviously in the 2000s, it didn't work anymore. And that was the reason why um, also the Frida Giannini collections kind of didn't work. They actually went so far that they had to kick her out and um yeah she was fired and that was also like very controversial uh because she was still a designer that a lot of people in the industry still admired but she wasn't able to elevate the brand or change it the, and the brand overall was just experiencing such a loss that they didn't find any other solution than to fire her and that's the funniest thing ever because it's like 2015 that is the year where alessandro michele um turns to be the creative director of gucci and it's like five days prior the menswear show in milan and uh, they don't have a creative director and they don't have a show they do not want to show the collection frida designed so i mean five days for a gucci show is like the most riskful thing ever so i really can still not understand how um how they were like that riskful and decided to just change the creative director no matter what and I mean, they were actually declaring to show shit instead of Frida Giannini's collection, which is pretty funny in my opinion. This person that um, Alessandro Michele was working with, and who, who is not his boss, but he was something from the upper management, I think, really saw the opportunity to um, yeah, give Alessandro Michele the chance to design these things, this menswear collection, and to see how it works, because they must have been very frustrated, because they were like, okay, we, we put everything on Alessandro and we're just checking on how it will work. And um, I mean, you're Gucci, you're like the, I don't know, one of the top five brands in the world and everybody is watching you. And then, um, well, he designed something and uh, well, we saw like very, it's funny because we see that he of course didn't dare very much and it's like five days again. I'm, I mean, I'm getting nervous when I'm thinking about like that, you know, like have, being a designer and just having like five days to design something. So he had this menswear collection, uh, which was again like something controversial for the brand. And I mean, as they say, all press is good press. Um, it kind of didn't work out like they wished for in the beginning. So Alessandro designed the collection and they had these pussy bow blouses, like a lot of silk stuff also, um, open sandals, like very feminine attributes that you saw in a menswear collection that were definitely not very typical Gucci because Gucci was like, you know, the alpha, the 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 strong man. I mean, if you have a sexy woman, usually on the other side, you have this very typical 18th century. And I'm not talking about the Timothy Chalamet version. I'm talking about the I'm the man and I'm here uh, and you are my wife and you know what I mean? Like, you know, like this very patriarchy standards. Usually that's the only problem I have with sexy clothing as well. I feel, I, I still feel like we have a problem with defining like um, body freeness somehow with, with nakedness and not associating it with sexiness. I think that's something that does, has worked for me. It is always <clears throat> in combination with sexiness and uh, that's something i would like to to see on a label that um 
doesn't do that. I mean, for example, Mugler is a good example as well. I think they are pretty good in that, in that boldness, that sexiness. I'm showing also skin, but usually I think that's very contradictional. Anyway, so he showed that collection with men like having pretty long hair. I mean, also like inspired maybe from himself, who also had long hair. And we know his visual, you know, and he having like a lot of rings on his fingers. And the models also had these rings on their fingers, so it was, everything was very feminine. And one thing you need to know about Milan, and it's not that I'm like in the industry and I know what all the people are talking, but it's a very conservative city and the fashion industry is also very conservative. So I heard from a lot of the young designers that they have a very hard time in Italy, also in Paris, but for example, not in London or New York, because these cities are just a bit more open-minded. I mean, maybe it's because it's more industrial and they do not celebrate themselves so much for their heritage kind of i do not know i mean i feel also feel like i would be more comfortable as a young designer in new york or london but paris is like a lot like where do you come from to which house have you designed earlier i mean i mean fendi for example yeah with kim jones it's modern but it's not like revolutionary it's still in my opinion it's still very classy and this, I mean, Louis Vuitton is still like the most different one to me because Nicolas Gasquier still manages to kind of get that futuristic approach and that vintage approach together, which is insanely good in my opinion. But Gucci also used to be like very classy. That's why it didn't work. So he came out with that collection and the reviews weren't good. Um, people didn't like the collection or let's say they didn't understand it kind of because they fall, uh, felt like, they thought like it's, um changing the the dna of the brand to something very bad and it's actually not a good development the brand is making and um i feel like the older people in the industry also don't like it when something is trying to turn younger or try to uh, be appealing to a younger audience they, they kind of feel betrayed that's also something that i can imagine that they're like okay you know what we do not like this rubbish you know just like how we do not like tiktok or something so um we just have to accept that the younger generation is changing something. And it was the first time that Gucci was actually trying to target a group of young people. And um, I mean, this was like the best thing possible because if your, consume, uh, if your customers are slowly dying, I mean, it, it's actually the same that happened to Phoebe Celine. If, you're, if, if, if they're slowly dying, you have a problem and you have to find a new audience that is buying your stuff. And what better way than to take the accessories designer who is also making like most of the revenue as the creative director of the brand and letting him design everything. So he started to design and you know, we saw these horse loafers with the fur and laying them. I wanted them so much. I think it was 2015 or 16. So you see how your style is changing in five to six years. I wanted them so much, but I still got them without fur because I was like very future forward and thought, okay, you know, the fur version will not be cool maybe in several years and <clears throat> possibly the best decision I have ever made. But he really changed the game also, you know, implementing the monogram. So you also had this heritage feeling. And at the same time, everything seems like very vintagey when it comes to Gucci with the whole, with all these applications and the colors and the logos and the glasses and the had sex accessories and the chains and stuff. It kind of turned into that ugly chicness that we knew from Mutual Prada, for example. Um, which is also an Italian label that managed to work it out. And, uh, well, everybody was also thinking that uh, in retail stores, you know, uh, maybe you know, I just read a few comments and they were like, yeah, you know what, the collection seems cool and stuff on the runway, but I, will, I, I would really like to know how the things will sell in retail. Well, the moment the stuff hit the, hit the retail stores, everything sold out, especially, I mean, the handbags and shoes. So it was all going very well. And I mean... The shows were like extremely cool. The castings changed completely. I mean, please look at the Gucci cast and look at how it looked like seven years ago. It completely changed. Um, of course, also with the new era we are in, but also I feel like Alessandro Michele is also changing the game from his perspective. Um, and I mean, I just have to always think of that collection with the dragons. Um, uh, it's insane, you know? He really had a beautiful set um, and managed to create a new DNA with a brand. And I mean, I do not see a lot of nods to Tom Ford anymore. Alessandro is still a huge fan of Tom Ford, but I, design wise, I actually have to say, I do not see a lot of 
uh, similarities anymore so that's totally fine to me what's interesting is that these bees and these patches and these applications that he has on the clothing usually when people say that um well yeah he kind of copies tom ford from his era where he made these um alessandro was the one designing them and putting them on so it was his handbag being designed in the era of tom ford so he's actually just copying himself um, I mean, it's funny because whenever I see that, for example, on Peter Doe or Daniel Lee, but I'm like, okay, they're totally copying Celine here. It's like, yeah, they worked in the design team for Celine back then. So maybe it's just their own design. They're implementing on a different brand. So we have to really be careful here when we say these kind of things. Anyway, the last years have been brilliant and great for the brand. And I feel like we were never exposed that much to the brand like we have been in the last month, thanks to the film which is like a huge Hollywood film and um, the cast is like insane. But anyway, sometimes things can just be too much. And there is always a point, I mean, I didn't see that point in Celine, for example, but when I saw the recent collection, it was the first time ever where I didn't feel anything. Um, I looked at the clothes, I tried to find my favorite one, you know, like the ones that you put in your safe folder. There wasn't a single outfit that I wanted to save and then I thought, okay, how come? And then I read a few reviews, you know, the Hollywood Boulevard and it's actually pretty cool because his, his mom worked as a, um, you know, she was suing or working like in the film industry and he was like raised with these images of Hollywood and stars and Marilyn Monroe and stuff. And um, he also, you know, had this design job. So of course he kind of had this very nostalgic and he is a very nostalgic person. I mean, if you look that his latest, his last five collections look like the Tenenbaums or like are very hardly inspired by them. Um, he is a very nostalgic person. So um, it's totally fine if you take the Hollywood Boulevard where I have to say it's, to me, it's like very, oh, okay. Um, it's not something very new. And I feel like the Hollywood Boulevard has like not, um, I do not know, but I don't feel it's like a cool place to be. Uh, Americans here, please implement. Is there anything cool? Is it? It's in Los Angeles, right? I have no idea. It's. I guess it's in Los Angeles. So, I mean, they just um, blocked this whole district just for the show. And when I saw like the visuals from high up, you know, from the sides, I did. I just didn't feel like a show. It just seemed like people are walking on the street, and I was like, okay, why did they even have to? Um, block all this area to to show the show because i feel like it had a bit more potential to be a bit more glammy you know it didn't feel like glammy hollywood to me and also when coming to the clothes and this is actually where this whole point of this video is if you look at the collection and then it will just go chronologically and looking at the pictures with you um oh my god it's also like so many looks how many do we have it, it's even not loading that fast we have like 115 looks and the problem is um, they're very repetitive. You know, there were like, for example, I'm scrolling and I feel like I see the same thing over, over and over. I do not feel like it has been necessary to show 115 looks. I mean, maybe they needed it for the time because like the walk was too long. I mean, I thought of everything. Maybe it's a technical thing that, that they were like, okay, we have these three walks and people need to walk. And if we only have like 60 looks, it, it will not be enough. And the back of it won't have anything to see. So maybe that was the reason. But um, also like the cast, okay, we have Macaulay Culkin here. We have Jared Leto here and the other ones that I do not know. Macaulay Culkin, okay, that kind of stole my heart when I saw that he's working for them because I still lo love you. Um, and but Jared Leto, I mean, he cannot rescue you forever. I mean, I know Jared Leto is super cool uh, and very it fits so perfectly into that Gucci identity and brand. He also seems very androgynous and can look very cool in men's and women's wear. And he is also having a very important role in the film um, Gucci. Okay, for example, the first look. Okay, I mean, I look at it. Um, you know what I loved about Gucci, even though Gucci is not like my first go-to brand it is of course not but i love for their accessories their sunglasses they have an insane quality i mean it's whenever i touch something and i have a few gucci pieces because it's they're very striking pieces um it, they have an insanely well-made quality and i cannot say anything against it and the price is i mean i get the price it's like okay somebody has sat there and designed and these persons need to get paid and it's usually produced in italy so 
it's worth it if you have the money but when i look at these things and i see okay um i mean the tights are like the only thing i find interesting but this fake fur cardigan the, the this seems like a taffeta skirt or something i mean it's not okay this is boring and it's like your opening look then you have this very this is very cliche to me you know this very cliche uh satin um okay i like the thing on the happy accessory and the gloves because they seem like they fit perfectly but again i'm here for ready to wear and that is not interesting next look mm not revolutionary you know i also cannot see these breast applications anymore you know like schiaparelli um everyone is doing it and it's very jean paul gautier it's fine i don't want to see it and the satin also doesn't fit well okay now we have you get a three-piece a nerdy um suit which is very gucci very typical this here i mean it kind of doesn't look like it's very high in quality i do not know if it's just me but i feel like it's not like the stuff we usually went to see another suit okay it's like the second one a negligee dress with like a fur overcoat or something and like snakeskin boots um this looks a bit more interesting again something not very variable but very gucci i would say uh the tights um i mean this is something very gucci i like i like the underwear but this cardigan is killing me you know it's like so it's like the bad vintage version i like the cowboy hat but for example this zip here it's too long it seems like it's not fitting and if my like amateur eyes are realizing that i do not want to know what other people see in that so it, in my opinion it doesn't seem like it fits perfectly here i have to say like the breast parts it's interesting uh, i don't like it but it's interesting um here oh i know that okay she's also famous i forgot her name not interesting okay this is interesting but like you know what i mean okay and i'm lo at look 14 and i cannot do a lot more i mean there are interesting looks such as this one you know just because of the color combination in my opinion so it's a huge tights thing still going on a lot of plateau heels i only see like plateau shoes very western inspired suits overall Mm, tights with these boots i mean what has been in on their mind when they designed when and then this futuristic glasses it really seems very random to me and usually i'm a huge fan of randomness uh i think balenciaga is still like one of the best doing that but here it really feels like okay we're in a rush and we need to put something together uh, i don't know and i would like to see more also this latex thing with um uh spitze Okay, this one I like the hair here you know but it's like okay it, I like it here because everything fits better I actually like the fur coat and uh, okay and the last question uh, what does this collection want to tell us like what is the purpose of this collection did I just don't get it is, is it like Hollywood nostalgia uh, in the 60s 50s made modern because it's not it's not um, Hollywood made cool um, it just looks like very I mean it's Gucci is a very costume your label you know it seems like it, you're always going into a costume shop and trying to find something for a film or theater or something uh, but still I think the ready to wear was still wearable at least until now but here I also don't feel like I want to wear it and um, the quality and the cuts well to round this thing here up I think it was a big marketing campaign which is okay uh, in, in my opinion if you also are able to assure that the clothes fit to that marketing campaign and i know that you have uh, the december issues of vogue where lady gaga is and you have these targeted ads with your film everywhere and everywhere you just see this gucci film and then you also have the hollywood boulevard so actually you just don't have any other place where you didn't um <clears throat> market yourself kind of it feels like they didn't have the time to think about the clothes and to me well i'm really questioning the future of the brand because i also think that we are kind of over this nostalgia effect also so i think alessandro has to really change his mind a little bit or deepen uh, what he has achieved uh, prior i don't think it's an easy road so um overall i have to uh, in my opinion it kind of has to change he needs something new we didn't see anything new there wasn't a single item where i would say this will be like 
a very trendy piece and Gucci is a brand that needs these pieces even if we do not participate in these trends there hasn't been anything where I saw the um, the chance of um, seeing something I mean this is actually like my opinion I was not surprised anymore because the last collection was also like not I was not the biggest fan of it uh, but I also feel like it's kind of dying right now so I wouldn't May, yeah, I mean, it is also flopping to me because you cannot only focus on the film and not on the fashion anymore. So, uh, yeah, please tell me down below what you think. Maybe I'm exaggerating and it's he's still like the best thing that ever happened to the brand. I think he is. We cannot uh, appreciate enough how he changed the brand. Uh, but nevertheless, we have to say sometimes the time is just over and I feel like this might be the case for Alessandro. And yeah, that's actually it. I hope you liked the video. Um, I just wanted to make a little chit chat about this whole Gucci topic because I felt like I need to address that. And even though this is not a brand that we, um, actually it's a cool brand. So I don't want to say it's not a brand that we usually wear or something is a cool brand. Uh, if you do not wear the jogging suits or something. So um, yeah, if you like this video, as I said, do not forget to subscribe and um, like, follow me on Instagram also. And if you have any other ideas what I can talk about, this is my chai, it's like so cold in here, oh god. I also do not like my setting here, but I cannot change it right now, so I'm sitting on a bed. And what can I say? I really appreciate... Um, Thank you.